countdown just so I don't right. lost. Sorry, you guys are live. <laughs> ah, all right. I was just sitting there Here's going, man, I'm, I'm staring at myself for way too long. I'm going to mess this up. So You're, you're good. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, we have a special guest today, and uh, I am covering for Christy, so I apologize if I'm not prepared. I literally strolled in here a couple seconds ago, which Christy is not surprised of at all. But uh, Ms. Selena Reyes, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. So my name is Selena Reyes. I'm born and raised here in the Valley. I am part of the Fort Mojave Indian Tribe. I am the director for the tribe's vocational rehabilitation department. I've been in that profession since 2013. And I just was elected in 2017 to serve as one of the leaders. Very cool. And we already established that you are a mom. Yes. You are a sports mom. I'm a so that means mom. you're super busy? Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, if you're involved in some form of um, you know, leadership, uh, obviously everyone has a day job and you're doing, you're doing parent sports stuff, you are super busy. So my first question is, how do you balance the time? You know, it actually is a learning game. You <laughs> yes, know, to it's always a moving goal Prioritize. Post. Prioritize and my family does come first. So if they have something going on, you know, we make it a team effort. Me, my husband, my mother, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, you know, my brothers, sisters, we all make it a team effort. So I will be there. I might be late, but I'll be there. Yeah. It's something that a lot of people don't actually realize is how valuable it is to prioritize family first, because if things aren't right with your family, then you can't do the other stuff. And um, a lot of times we don't realize that as uh, employers or leaders until it's a little too late. And uh, so it's something to always keep in mind. Um, that that is uh, always got to be the priority. It's always got to be home first. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> happy wife, happy life, happy mom. We're good. Listen, I think it's something like that. I'm not sure. I got divorced, so I didn't get the message right. So Hey, that, hey <laughs> it's a learning curve. Yes, it is. And I, I learned my lessons uh, a little slower. So um, now you guys have actually got a lot of cool stuff going on there, but I want to talk first about um, what you do specifically. Now you you said that you work in the vocational rehabilitation. Yes. So what exactly does that mean and what do you do with that? Okay, so the main goal of my department is we serve enrolled members of any, any federally recognized tribe so they can come and receive services if they have a documented disability. We help them gain or maintain their current employment. So let's say an individual comes in and you know, maybe they were involved in a car accident where they, they are not able to stand up for long periods of time. Maybe their job requires them to stand up. So we assist with member, maybe they need a device that allows them to stand up with a back brace, whether it's the um, different types of shoes. So we provide them accommodation so that they can maintain their employment or just help them get and gain and gain competitive employment. So that's our main goal is just to put individuals within that workforce. So we, we have obviously seen the job market change a lot. And I, I literally just posted about this last night. So I apologize to those people who follow me and have to hear all the same things twice. <laughs> um, but it seems like people are really looking for um, employees. Are you, are you seeing the same thing? Is that um, kind of isolated to, um, you know, these guys that are looking for kind of higher employment or is that across the board? It's across the board within our tribal casinos, both of them, the Spirit Mountain, as well as our V Resort and Casino and our tribe in general, we have the need to fill open positions from chief of police. We, that's something that's new. We need a chief of police. We just hired a health department director, which that was so far and in between. You know, it took us some time to to get that position filled. But within our casino, we have like three pages of open positions. It's crazy. It's so crazy. And, and, and the weirdest thing that I experience, and I don't know about you, but I go out and talk to people day to day, and everyone's looking for a job. Then yep. I say man, everybody's hiring and they go, I can't find anything. And so I, I don't know where the disconnect is, but it's really good to know. Now, where do you send people? Do you have them come to you, your office or do you send them just to the regular uh, HR? What, what is the process for trying to get employment in some of those places? So we have the applications for the tribe, which also we 
provide that communication with the AV and also Spirit Mountain and get them connected to those human resources departments. So there is multiple jobs. Like you can see here on our tribe's website, we do have the different entities and then also available on the website is the applications that you're able to apply and then have them either hand delivered or faxed or emailed to our tribal human relations resources department. So you mentioned you guys are hiring a police chief. Is that um, something you said you have not had or you just lost your existing police chief? Is that a new position? It is a position that was filled. We recently, you know, had the chief of police, you know, leave the department so we are looking for someone new somebody able to come into our department and be that that lead yeah and that's a great opportunity that's that's a very challenging job to fill i'm sure uh it's probably super competitive and not a lot of qualified folks so uh that is a great opportunity for you um i wanted to ask you uh, i saw that some of those pictures you had and uh just had a really exciting thing happen with our local um, I don't know what you even call it, our backdrop, our everything we see every day. Yes. Um, we just turned that into a national, not a monument. Is it a national monument national. now? National, yes. It so what all does that include? That is the whole area. I heard th it's hundreds and hundreds of acres, correct? Yes. 450,000 is the entire area over there. And you can see it from both sides. So when you're going the Laughlin way to go to to Las Vegas, you'll be able to see the first sign on the right, right there. And this is something because this <clears throat> mountain, Aviquame, is very, very special to us as Fort Mojave, Pipa Ahamakav. We are called Pipa Ahamakav, the people who live along the river. And this is the beginning of our creation, that right there. And so we know, you know, it's, it's protected forever. And that right there to us is very, very important. So does that um, protect it from development, recreation? What, what, what all does yes. that mean exactly? It does protect it from having any solar projects being placed over there or any other type of development. I could get an ocean of solar panels? Darn. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so funny. You know, you drive to Vegas, and uh, I remember and back in my day, there was nothing out there. It was just dry lake bed and nothing. And now... Essentially everything, including parts of that dry lake bed, are completely covered with solar panels. Right. It's uh, it's pretty wild to see it. I guess I have mixed feelings about it because it's good for the energy, but it's, it's not know, pretty. The <laughs> funny thing about that is that the energy that they're producing is for California. Now listen, everything we're producing is for California. <laughs> it's not for Nevada. Argonda, don't get me started. <laughs> okay, don't get me started. This is, a fam this is a family show, man. Yeah, Come let, on. Let's stay to the area. <laughs> yeah. So as we're uh, keeping it a family show, uh, you actually had a really uh, good opportunity to meet the president. Yes, we did. We had a majority of our leadership be able to, as you can see, uh, meet and thank the president. This was shortly after he had signed it as into being a national monument. And this is the first monument that is named in a tribal language. Really? Yes, the first. Wow. So that it was pretty amazing. That is cool. Look at that. Yes. And now you told me you didn't tell him his suit was the same color as the drapes. No, you know, and it's shame on his staff. Shame on his staff. Uh, Jeff, can we go back a picture? And I was just wondering if you could. I, I don't know um, if you have the opportunity to do it much. Sorry, Jeff, I didn't mean to throw your curveball. Um, obviously, that is um, the rest of your council. Yes. If we get back. Are we stuck, Jeff? No, I'm getting there. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I was doing something else at the moment. Uh, and I just wonder if maybe you could uh, mention, um, obviously, the other people involved here. Uh, it's a great picture of everyone. Who is everybody in that picture? Okay, so you have our tribal secretary who is standing right in front of me, Colleen Garcia. Behind me is tribal council member Johnny Ray Hemmers. And you also have our vice chairman who's standing directly behind President Biden. He wore the same color suit. Yes, a little <laughs> dark, but, you know, he, he did. He didn't get the memo. But that's our vice chairman, Shan Lewis. And then to, it would be to the left of the president, you have Deb Holland. And she's with the Department of Interior. And then you have our chairman who's standing next to her, which is Chairman Timothy Williams. And then by him is Tribal Council Member Michael 
Jackson. And missing in that picture is Tribal Council member Nicole Garcia. She had to stay back to hold down the fort. Oh, I was going to say, how did yes. she miss that of all I the things, know, you know? I know. Was she mad? She, yeah, <laughs> she's like, crop me in. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like meeting the president? Is it as extensive as you think? Is there a background? Or do they just show up and you hang out? How'd that no, go? No, actually, we had to go through so many different clearances. We had to take a COVID test. We had to make sure we fill out a form so and it also included our social security number. So imagine, you know, what background went into that, you know? <laughs> and so, yeah, it was very extensive. And then when we actually got to the room, which he was going to come and take that photo, we had to put our cell phones and our phones, everything like on the other side of that room so that we didn't have any items on our person. Wow. Had it been a little intimidating, huh? Yeah, it was, you know, and then it was so fast. It was like, okay, you're done. Let's go. Oh, really? Yes. Ah, that's enough. So you didn't get to talk to him? It was just, thank you. We appreciate, you know, you putting this as a national monument and protecting our sacred site. It's good you were there for that because if it was me, I would have asked him about his Corvette. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even think of a car. <laughs> I'm a car guy. I always get asked about the car. My so. son's a car guy too. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, I, I can only imagine how serious that is and I would be the one to say something silly. So if they ever uh, give me a chance to meet the president and once they check my social media, they're going to tell me I can't meet the Gotta president. Go. Sorry, sorry, bud. They're all, Shane, you've said some weird stuff over the years. We're going to go ahead and disqualify you here. So... <laughs> Uh, so that is a super cool thing. And obviously, uh, it, it, you know, to us who just drive by every day, it's just a beautiful backdrop. And it's such a cool part of our um, our city, our town. And uh, it's very cool they got that done for you guys. And right. I didn't know that was the uh, first actual name in tribal language. That's pretty cool. Yes. yes. It's got to be kind of like a bragging rights, right? Do you brag yeah. about it a little bit? You know, it's hard not to, you know, to be, you know, really prideful of that and just honored because as far as us, as the people of Hamakov, we are to protect our land and our water. So that's very, very important to us. Yeah. I, I, obviously, it's always important. You know, water is literally life. Life. Like, it is It is what we need. And now, I mean, we've had such wild water situations out here. I can only imagine, um, you know, how much that, that hits home now. You know right. what I mean? So Yesterday, we actually met with the Bureau of Reclamation, our tribal leadership, in reference to what's taking place at Lake Mead and, and, and the effects that, you know, it has to, to us as yeah. a tribe. Have you seen, and I don't want to get off topic, if it's weird, we can just skip it. Have you seen those stories about where the water is going to downriver from us and then getting shipped? Like they're growing alfalfa and then shipping the alfalfa overseas. Have you seen that? Yes. How, does that just drive you insane? Does it make you angry? Or is that just kind of something you have to deal with? You know, to us, you know, we do have where our farms is one of our main financial re um, revenues within our tribe. That's that's one of our main ones, and also with our casinos and our our smoke shops. You know, and so, you know, we do have that's you know something that we alfalfa. You know, it's kind of crazy that you mention it. It's something that we resorted to rather than you know utilizing another another product so it is kind of you know strange but we do have different um, buyers when it comes to you know our products yeah I, I have seen some of those things i've talked to uh, some other folks who have some farmland out in the valley and they mm -hmm. kind of told me the same thing like it's just kind of a it ends up breaking down to just some economics it's right. it's it's just a weird situation that now we have such a water crunch you know and then we got all this rain and snow mm -hmm. And now we got more water we can handle up north, and we just yeah. hope it trickles down here eventually, yeah, right? That's the hope. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we had mentioned already a little bit about being a sports mom. Yes. Um, Jeff, do you have that picture available? Uh, I'd like to tell tell me what's going on here. All right. This was actually this past weekend. So I had both of my kids. One, my son, he plays for the travel ball organization Tigers, and then my daughter, she plays for the Arizona Bombers. Reyes Williams organization so they both had tournaments in Vegas so I was dropping my son off at one of the fields <laughs> going back picking my Good husband thing and my schedule daughter them up. somewhere else huh exactly and <laughs> we've had it happen before so where my my husband had to be somewhere and then me and my son had to be 
in Queen Creek. So oh, geez. It, it happens, you know. So who's the little one hiding behind the big guy? She is our T-ball coach pitch player, my little Diana. <laughs> She's my firecracker right there. That's a great picture. Thank so, you. So uh, both of those are great organizations. I, I've actually interacted with some of them um, in other things and whatnot, and they're really good organizations. Um, how did they get into softball, baseball, or do they play other sports? What's what's their passion? So my daughter, she actually was kind of the first one to go into travel ball. And, you know, we linked up with John Glenn. He is her pitching coach. It's a good and guy. Yes, we got yeah. her information from the chairman, which he actually, him and his father run the Arizona Bombers. And he gave us the contact information for John. And so she's been going to him since she was seven years old. And she is an amazing pitcher, you know. And she plays for the 12U. And she just has that love and that drive for the game. And then my son, you know, he, he played the Little League, you know, throughout his Little League career. And um, we were linked up with the Tigers, you know, just recently. So he, he enjoys the game. And who, uh, who runs that Tigers team? I feel like I know who that is, too. I'm drawing a blank. Robert Lara. Oh, He's that's the right. coach good for, dude. for yeah. them, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's so important to have good people around these kids, not just teach them sports, you know. It, they're definitely two different things. And, you know, if you have one without the other, either way, you know, if you have – great you know a great influence but they don't teach them anything then you're right. really not getting out of what you wanted and then if you have great sports but you don't come out of it a better person it's kind of a you know what's the point of that too you know so yeah. it's good to get mixed up with both those i've uh uh the glens were uh frequent winners of athletes of the week uh over the years and so i got to meet john a couple times really nice guy and he gave me a uh river valley shirt and i oh. coached football for mojave oh and so i was lucky it was just a little too small for me you know like it's a little too tight so I, I was like ah so i hung it up at the dealership and i think christy actually has it by her desk so awesome. uh but great people and uh, they've done yes. a great job putting out a bunch of uh young ladies who've gone and played co a lot of college softball yes yes yeah. that's our hope you know and also you know me and my husband were able to coach the Mojave Valley Junior High softball team this year. Oh, so really? So we were number one seed. Of course, we, you know, didn't win it. We got second place there at the tournament. And um, I also, prior to that, for the past two years, I coached the basketball team at the Mojave Valley Junior High School. So, you know, to me, it's just Man, important. you are a busy lady. Yes. But you know what? <laughs> my main thing, you know, what's really important to me as a individual and as a mother and a leader is, you know, the impact that you're going to have on those youth, you know, because there are some youth who don't have, you know, the ability to have a mother present or a positive role model. And that's important to me. Yeah, so we are actually um, just coming up on our ACES Awards are Wednesday. So just inside of a week. And um, <laughs> We get to go out, and I don't know if you know about our ACES program, but we go and we actually go to each school and interview their nominees. And it is amazing to hear uh, the impact that some of those coaches and schools have on those kids or even teachers um, because they don't have it anywhere else. And uh, then you see that those kids became high achievers, good athletes, good students. Um, and, you know, everyone's got to do a little bit along the way. So when you catch them in that uh, you know, middle school age is a really crucial time because, you know, I always, you know, I make the joke, everybody's probably tired of me hearing it, but like middle school is like the black hole when, when kids are young, they're cute and everybody looks out for them. And then they get to middle school and they're not quite high school and everybody just kind of, eh, they'll get through in a couple of years and it's a really crucial age. So it's pretty cool. Where, where did you develop your interest in basketball? I actually played basketball with the needles wreck. You know, I, I feel that like was everybody my joy. did. Yeah, right? We, <laughs> small community. That's small community vibes right there, you know. But that's where I started my love for basketball. And then I played, I didn't play my junior high years, you know, in at the school level. When I got to high school, I was, I played JV, freshman, and varsity. So I, you know, got to be coached by Coach Larry Moore. And, you know, he was a father figure to me. And, he really seen the potential that I had and you know he was one of the reasons why I went off to play college in high school I mean in college basketball in college I went to Rocky Mountain College in Billings Montana and I played wow. out there for battling bears so that was that was really important to me you know because so that's where it came from let me ask you a question about leaving the area and going to a place like Montana was it 
culture shock? Was it just colder, no big deal? What what was that like? Because I see a lot of kids who leave the area, and I feel like there's a little bit of culture shock where it's a it's a different world. You know, it we is. live in a very unique place. It it was a culture shock. You know, coming from a small community, you know, you have a lot of individuals who have that support and that love for you. Going out there, it was a little different. It was we were shunned as a native american in certain areas you know but the school actually had a native american association on campus so that was something that gravitated me to build my little community there within the college oh that's great yeah. i mean it's terrible that you experienced that um but uh that's really great that you found that so what did you uh graduate from there did you come back what uh yes so i graduated in 2005 from Rocky Mountain College, and then I came back because that was something that was always instilled in me when I was little is go out, get an education, and come back and help. Come back and help your tribe. So I came back, and I actually was hired by the Fort Mojave Indian Tribe. I was the support worker for the social services department, and I worked my way up from a support worker to when I got my master's degree, I became a human services worker one and then also I became the supervisor, like within six months, you know, I, I was oh, wow. the supervisor for that department. Wow, look at that. This is a recent picture, actually. I just obtained my doctorate in special education from Walden University. And I get to walk with my class July 21st. Wow, very exciting. That's awesome. So, you know, you mentioned the needles wreck, and I have to tell you, um, so I moved into this town in the 90s, and I think I played, until I got to high school, I think I played more basketball in the Needles Rec, or that tribal gym out yeah. there, than I ever Still did there. in Bullhead, uh, up until I got into high school. Okay. I would go out, and I played with uh, uh, the Christensen brothers, okay, uh, Sonny and Craigie, and uh, we would go out, and we'd play there. We'd play at one gym until they either kicked us out, or we made somebody <laughs> mad. Then we'd go to the next gym, and then do the same thing, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It was... Uh, and it, it was the only place in town where you could just show up and play basketball. You didn't have to yeah. rent a gym or schedule. You just show up and play. It was always yeah. a lot of fun. So, And they produced a lot of good basketball players out of there. Exactly, exactly. Now we have our state-of-the-art wellness center. I'm not sure if you have ever been there. I would so like I to have take not, you there. I say I have not, um, but I have some friends that go there. Okay. And I'm always like, and I don't want to knock my gym because I like my home gym. Yeah. But uh I'm like, dang, I want to go there. Yes, yes. Yeah. Let me know, you know. So I'll tell you what, we will uh, we will go out and do a community spotlight on it if you'd Wonderful. like. That, um, would that would be awesome because I actually do want to go out there and check it out. But it looks like it's got everything. Yeah, we have a indoor lap pool. We have an upstairs walking area that you can walk if it's too warm outside. We have a track outside. We have a... It, we call it our Mojave it's Fit almost area. always too warm outside. Yeah, but I <laughs> done my my CrossFit workout out there yesterday. It was beautiful. Yeah, you know. But um, yeah, we have a area where we do Zumba, and I'm hoping we can get a Pilates class going on in there. We need different instructors, you know, of course, for that who are certified. And then we have a all women's working area. Sometimes some women, you know, don't want to be. You guys want to work out with me? What's up with that? Yeah, you know, and that's okay. <laughs> you know, that's okay. We we try to, you know, make sure that we cater to those individuals. There's a little reel going around important. the internet and it showed like other people's perspectives of people yeah. at the gym. And I was like, oh, that's me. I'm that guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm the one who I'm throwing my way down. Ah! Yes. I'm the one over there, and I'm, like, leaning on my bench, looking all mad. And then I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? You know? <laughs> so uh, I have to be a little more self-aware of uh, what I look like. But yes. um, how long has that wellness center been there? 2017. And what was the motivation? Because obviously that's a big commitment. What was the motivation of bringing that in? Well, leadership, we took a look at, you know, a lot of the numbers when it comes to diabetes, when it comes to individuals who are on dialysis, those who have high blood pressure. And a lot of that stems around, you know, your ability to eat right as well as your ability to be mobile. So that was one of our main reasons is we looked at the our health disparities and thought, you know, what can we do as a tribe to better our health? So yeah, that's, absolutely. That's, that's a that's a really cool uh, facility. And uh, have you seen some positive benefit from it? Yeah. Obviously, I see a lot of people uh, going there and working out. Has it kind of achieved it? Or is it still a work in progress? You know, we have tackled... Bearing the people are always a work in progress. Exactly. But <laughs> exactly. You know, it's a work in progress, you know, and 
it takes the right individuals to welcome individuals in to feel comfortable and to want to come back. So, you know, that we appreciate our wellness center staff and those who are, have certifications in Zumba and uh, CrossFit as well as um, TRX, things like that. So, you know, we, we just appreciate them. And we also have a, um, it's like a, where, where the individuals can come in and learn how to cook healthy. Yeah, I don't know what you call that, but that is uh, that is crucial. And I'll tell you, I've been trying to eat a little better myself. Yeah. Uh, you know, you find yourself, you go, dang, you know, I'm 280 pounds again. Like, oh. what the heck happened? So it happens. <laughs> it happens. And uh, and you know, I basically just default to like my meathead diet, like chicken and rice, oh. chicken and rice, chicken and rice. But it's really not a good diet. It's mm-hmm. just lower calorie. Right. You know, like there's so much more to your nutrition than that. And uh, yes. so it's really good to offer that because that's, I. I promise you, I try. You cannot outwork a bad diet. So right. you got to get the food part right. So. Yeah, nutrition and, you know, that's I think that's what we call as nutrition class. So that's something that, you know, we really take pride into and we appreciate our nutrition um, educator, yeah. Veronica. Good job, Veronica. Yeah. Shout out, Veronica. Yes. <laughs> you want to introduce the board to us here? Okay, so this is from left to right. I'll go ahead and and let you know this first one's Michael Jackson. He's a tribal council member, of course, myself, tribal council member, Selena Reyes. You have our vice chairman, Shan Lewis. You have our tribal chairman in the middle, Timothy Williams, and our tribal secretary, she's elder. She's actually an elder, the eldest of our tribal council. Her name is Colleen Garcia, tribal council member, Johnny Ray Hemmers, and then also tribal council member, Nicole Garcia. And something about this, you know, we have coming up is our tribal elections is the first weekend of, first weekend of June. And those who are, whose seats are up is myself, Nicole Garcia, and Timothy Williams. So, you know, we just encourage our membership to, to go out and vote. Um, is, is that, uh, are there a lot of people vying for those seats or how, what is the nature of those elections out there? Is it pretty competitive or do they, I mean, honestly, it seems like you have a pretty supportive group. You have good people in place and everyone seems to be on the same page. Is that just a outside perception or is it pretty uh, competitive? You know, it, we, right now we have six individuals who are running. So we have us three plus three more, you know, and of course, our tribal membership is the ones who elect us into those positions. So, you know, we have been doing amazing things. The current leadership at this time, you know, we are redoing our California road roads as well as our repiping for the houses there because they're, you know, fairly old. And then we, of course, built duplexes, 24 duplexes because that was a need within our tribal yeah. community, you know, and right now we broke ground to build apartments for our community as well so you know we we have been doing great things but still you know it's up to the membership yeah absolutely and i mean it's crucial if, if uh you know you can't choose your leaders and you yes you know you don't have a voice that's that's no good so right. um what is something that you wish people maybe understood about uh the tribe or um you know things that maybe you mentioned uh having a bad experience in college are there some things that frustrate you about um, you know, working within the community or your own community that people maybe don't understand? You know, as far as me within my position as a leader and as a director for a program, you know, we are always willing to partner because we can't do it alone. That's something that I have learned, you know, in my career is teaming up with individuals. Don't reinvent the wheel, you know, work together because a majority of the time you have a common purpose. Yeah, well, the one thing that blows me away is it seems like in every world, every facet of our world, um, communication struggles. Um, you know, just like we were joking about finding jobs earlier, uh, I get people looking for jobs and I get people hiring. They don't seem to find each other properly or they don't have the, the conversation that connects the dots. You know, that's one of my Shane-isms is we connect the dots, you right. know. Yeah, and <laughs> so. that's what's good about these shows, you know, is because sometimes you don't know – the full background of what is taking place or why it's taking place or why it's important to whether it's the tribe or a organization. So it's important to ask questions. You know, that's something that I always tell, you know, youth, because what we have upcoming is actually, I don't know if you have that flyer up there, Jeff, but it's a 
Honoring Abilities Conference, which we're teaming up with different organizations to this have one a here? career fair. Yes. You got this one, Argonda? A little glary, sorry. Yep, there you go. Thank you, sir. So that's coming up August 16th, 2023, you know, and we're going to have the V present, the V Resort and Casino Human Resources. We're going to have Arizona Department of Economic Security. We're going to have Banner Health present and some of the local local businesses come and be available so that they can state what jobs they have available and, and who knows, they might be able to hire on the spot. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, um, I don't know if you got any room for Finley in there, but we are okay. uh, we are always trying to Wonderful. hire folks and um, <laughs> it's challenging. Yeah. It really is challenging. And we, uh, we do hire people on the spot. Unfortunately, our actual hiring process takes a couple of weeks, yeah. but uh, we will definitely, uh, you know, we find the right people in the right place. And, uh, you know, we've actually found that with us expanding out here into Fort Mojave, um, it, we have a hard time filling up our roster. And so if anyone's out there looking, I don't want to steal from anybody else's job thunder, but we are always looking for yeah. good people. So um, what what is something that uh, you really wish people understood about this part of your job? I mean, is this really a passion for you? Is this something that um, you get frustrated with? What, what about this part of your job? No, I really enjoy this part of my job because we're at this conference as well as career fair that we are having, we're able to honor our consumers who have been successful in their employment plan. So we are able to present them and also let them know, you know, what we feel that they've done beneficial, you know, throughout their employment journey. And then also we give them an opportunity to also share with those who are in attendance at that conference, their struggles, their journey, but their ability to rise and be resilient. Yeah, absolutely. That is, uh, that is, you know, I coach a little football, but that is, a, that is the message I tell you all the time. It's not that you'll never have hard times. It's just how you handle the hard times. That's really the most important thing. And a lot of times you can do everything right and still have hard times. Right. And it's about how you deal with it and how you bounce back from it. So, um, are you still coaching anything? We just had our banquet on Wednesday, you know, to close out our softball for for the year and i'm hoping you know that we can continue me and my husband where i'm the team mom for the arizona bombers reyes 12u team so we play year round so we are that is uh, that, that is way more than coaching when yes. i started coaching football my whole rule was i will coach football but i don't want to do the team's mom stuff and uh we had great support and i honestly probably wouldn't have stuck with it if we didn't have good support in those early years because that stuff is stro scheduling things finding people reminders sending out group text all that stuff and i would just sit there and want to pull my hair out and say i just I just want to down block and throw touchdowns <laughs> i tell you yes and also trying to you know bring in donations so that we can go to nationals we go july 10th through the 15th in san diego Oh, very cool. Yes. That's exciting. Um, so I don't want to keep you too long today, but I, I do want to ask, uh, we would love to come down to a spotlight on the um, athletic center. Okay. Um, but do you have any other things that maybe don't get attention or that we could help you spotlight? And we call it the spotlight show for a reason. You know, those things exist. People are working hard to make them happen. We just want to put a spotlight on it. Uh, is there anything else that you think would be beneficial? You know, just our AV Resort and Casino. You know, like I stated, we have a lot of positions there. We would that, love to come down and spotlight yes. uh, the AV. And I've probably said the name wrong more times than I've said it right, so I apologize. Uh, but while you guys do that, Jeff, I will be down on the beach, and you guys let me know how it goes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then also in May, we are going to be opening up. I, I don't know the exact date, but we're going to be opening up that new pool there. Oh, my gosh. Yesterday, we had Bo up here, it. and uh, he was telling us about it. And uh, I've been watching Destry do some yes. pictures. Destry does great work. Yes. Uh, he worked for us for a while and left. I'm not happy about that, Destry. Uh, but he does great work. And that looks unbelievable. That's like, I mean, that's 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 not even a Vegas-style pool. That's almost like a water resort-style pool. Right. I went in there yesterday also with a couple of our, our leadership. We were able to see them, you know, before they start plastering it. And um, they were actually putting up a TV in one of the cabanas. Oh, really? Yes. Very so I went cool. Up the, I went up the, the pool and um, I stated, hopefully I can be the first one to go down this. I want to try <laughs> it out. I need to test it out. Yes, absolutely. So what, what went behind the decision for that? It was just because I'll tell you. Um, I go, my daughter loves movies, and so we go to the dang movies all the time there, and um, we get Crunch a Bunch and Popcorn and oh. two tickets, and uh, 
it's <laughs> it's the most expensive two hours ever. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, and uh, so anyway, um, but during the summer when we go, that pool is packed. packed. And that's one of the reasons, you know, is we know, of course, we're always thinking what will bring in people, revenue. And so that was something, you know, that we really looked into with, you know, the ACE board of renovating the pool area, you know, to make it bigger, to have the adults have their area as well. And then the kids have their area. Yeah. As a parent, that's always challenging. You know, you got somebody over there living their best life and I'm over here trying to swim with my kids. Right. Exactly. (laughs) So it gets a little tricky. We've done a few uh, vacations and uh, we've had a little bit of that and I'm like, Oh, sweetie. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for flashing. <laughs> Which listen, yeah. it happens everywhere. It happens, you know, I take my boat out and we have the same thing where I'm yeah. sitting there eating uh, apple slices and somebody else is over there having the time of their life. Right. So, right. Uh, so it's, it's for everyone. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Um, do you guys still do the big fireworks and, and all that? Yes. They actually did post that they are going to do Memorial Day fireworks. I don't oh, have the man. date, but go on the AV website and you'll be able to get that information. Yeah. But yes. And I think everyone local knows that is a unbelievable time. And, uh, you know, we like to kind of float by on the boat and watch yeah. it and it's unbelievable, but it's a little uh, hectic. Uh, you know, during that time, but it's, it's, you know, a lot of people like to go and set up on that lawn and on that beach. And it's a, it's an absolutely great time. I assume you've all been there, but if you haven't, um, put it on the calendar, especially uh, when did you say the pool would be ready? It's actually the end of May. So yeah. It's soon. So it's listen, soon. if you can get a spot in that pool and watch the fireworks, that's yeah. going to be a hell of a good time. So, um, I really enjoy talking with you. Um, I would love to do uh, spotlights on both, um, okay. whether it be just the pool or the Avi in general or okay. Avi in general. I apologize. I'll say it wrong a hundred okay. times. I also tell people I'm a white guy from the East coast. I'm okay. a Western Pennsylvania guy. And so I butcher, I've been, I've lived out here since the nineties and I still butcher every Spanish name, every, every name, every native name. So, uh, it's not personal. I just, <laughs> I just okay. didn't grow up with it, you know? So that's okay. Yeah. I still say, uh, uh, like all the foods wrong probably. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So that's all right. Yeah. It's not perfect, but, um, we appreciate you so much. Um, we we're very grateful you came on and I uh, would love to, uh, get out there, spotlight those things and you guys are doing a great job out there and, uh, we appreciate you being a part of the community. Wonderful. Thank you. And don't forget tribal membership, go out and vote, go out and vote. You guys got a good thing going on. Keep it going. Thank you, Selena. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Arganda.